Hi, and welcome to another edition here of The Tracker on City TV. Now, today we go globe trotting once again, and we shine the spotlight on one of the last survivors of the Red Bull Academy. He's been plying his trade basically between Austria and Germany. He's learned a lot in the lower divisions of the German uh, Bundesliga 2, and I'm sure that he's hoping to make it big. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll bring you today's message of motivation. Yes, like I promised, our guest for today is one who plies his trade in Germany and also in Austria. I don't know where he's heading next. He only can tell us. Our guest today on the tracker is none other than David Atanga. David, it's good to have you on the tracker. Thank you very much, sir. Let's, let's begin off from um, your young days as a footballer. Let's not even go to Red Bull just yet because then you had been exposed to um, proper football technology. Um, before any of that started, where did you begin your journey as somebody who wanted to pursue football? Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, when I was really young, I started playing uh, at Bolka Young Juventus. Ah. And from there, I was uh, moved to Red Bull Academy when I was 14. And then I was transferred to Red Bull Salzburg when I was 16, almost 17. Mm. So from there, it continues till now. Talk to me a little about playing for Bolga um, Red... Is it, what did you call them? Young Juventus. Bolga Young Juventus. Yeah. What was it like playing for a team like that? I mean, who owned the team? Where did the team play its matches? What was the pitch you played on like? Yeah, the team is owned by someone who took care of me when I was young. Oh. He's called Salifu Fatao, but we call him Kiyoyo. Nice. And yeah, we used to play at a school park and there are a little bit trees around it and mm -hmm. yeah, it was fun. We used to, and there was also a girls team next to us, so wow. sometimes we play games, friendly games mm -hmm. against the girls and all that. It was cool, and yeah, from this uh, this team, I moved to. Uh, we played a tournament at WA, mm -hmm. under 13 tournament, and then I I took part, and then from there, Red Bull scouted me to the academy. Well, I, I want to get to know David Atanga before even Red Bulls came calling. So the days when you were playing for your Colts team, um, what was that like? Did you have to run away to go and play football? Were your parents supportive of you pursuing football? And how did that even balance out with your education? Yeah, actually, I was staying with my two sisters um, a little bit far away from my family house. Mm -hmm. So from... And I used some... Sometimes I used to escape to go and play football because yeah. my sister, like, she wanted me to help her mostly mm -hmm. at home. But I do help her, but sometimes I really want to go and play some games or training but she wants me to stay at home but sometimes i just sneak out and play football but when i come home i just explain to her and she's cool with that hmm. now explain to us how um playing at a deprived setting like that builds toughness and character what, what does what does that do for you i mean you definitely weren't playing on the kind of pitches you are playing on now how does that help you or how does that even set you back because there are some times when footballers tell you that maybe if I was playing on a proper surface at this age I would perhaps have been have been better just measure that for me I mean back in the day those pitches what did that do for your career yeah for me I would say I grew up uh, to play on that pitch mm. so I was happy playing there yeah. I never complained when I was young for me everything was okay for me and yeah I, I would say playing on a better pitch at a younger age mm -hmm. will make your skills much better, will make like your thinking and everything much better, your technique and everything mm -hmm. will be much better. But at the, and also at the other side, if you also play there and you give mm -hmm. your best, I think at the end of the day, if you are good, you are good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Watching you, um, I realized that you are literally very comfortable playing with both feet. Now. Where did you start off playing? What position did you start off playing? And even now, what do you feel or where do you feel your natural position is? Yeah, in Red Bull, when I started also at Bolka Young Juventus, I used to play mostly number 10 or a secondary striker. Mm. And then when I moved to Red Bull Salzburg, I started playing as a right wing sometimes. 
but mostly I play as a second striker or as a right right winger. Mm. Where do you feel most comfortable? Yeah, it depends. When the game is too rough, then yeah. I prefer to play as a right winger. Then I have <laughs> more space. But yeah. if the opponents are also playing good football yeah. and I think number 10 is good for me, then I can also have a lot of um, free... Uh, Free role, uh, free role to be free able role to, to do play yeah. more better than at the right winger. Mm. Now let's talk about models and icons, right? Because mostly when you're a young man, you see, you'll be, you you grow up watching certain players. That you say that I want to be like this guy. Or I want my game to be like this guy. Who were your childhood icons growing up? Yeah, the truth is, when I was young, I I used to like Iron Robin because he's left foot and he uh, wears also my favorite uh, number. And I like also Ben Affa. Oh. Uh, well, if, if you like Ben Affa, it means you actually like showboating and flamboyance a lot. Yeah, I like those players. Like, <laughs> I really, they play, we have almost the same style of play. Yeah. And for sure, Messi, of course. He, but he is something else. But I, he's, he's just my role model. He has, he has the qualities yeah. of Robin and Ben Affa all together. <laughs> yeah. well, let, me, let me take you back to 2015. The, the FIFA Under-20 tournament in New Zealand. Now, that tournament started off really well for Ghana. I think a draw against Austria, Ghana beat Argentina by three goals to two. Everything looked like it was going well until we met Mali. Now, if I remember correctly, that Mali team gave Ghana problems during the AYC competition. Tell me a little bit about how difficult it is sometimes to play against African opponents like Mali as compared to sometimes playing against Europeans? Yeah, I think uh, Mali, they're also physically strong like us. And yeah, for example, Austria, we we played very well and they scored and then we equalized 1-1. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was, it was a fair game. We did our yeah. best, they did their best and we, we shared the point. And against Argentina, we deserved, we played very well and mm -hmm. we won. I think we really deserved it. But against Mali, they, the truth is they were much better than us. And yeah, in football, sometimes you meet someone who is better than you. You just have to find your way to win, to get a point or to yeah. win the game. And at the end of the day, they won. So we just accepted it and yeah. I mean, with, with regards to the tournament itself, right? Did you feel that the team had everything to possibly win and that it was just down to your opponents being better than you because in Ghana, people like to say a lot of things. People like to attribute early competition losses and defeats to maybe sometimes technical issues with the technical team, sometimes maybe motivational reasons. Was, that, was it just about what happened on the pitch? Yeah, if, I would say you can see how far Mali went to. Yeah. They played till the, the, third, end of, yeah. the end of the tournament and they beat also Germany. Yeah. And looking at Germany, how many players from this group plays in the Bundesliga? Mm -hmm. Almost all, more than half of them. Yeah, true. So you, you, from all this, you know that they have much quality than us. We, we had also good quality. I saw last Tete, he had like a very good team. Mm -hmm. But no matter how good your team is, someone is better than you. And they shot like um, early goals yeah. and yeah, sometimes some one mistake can decide the, the whole game. Sure. So I think that, that was their lucky side. Well, issues have emerged recently, right? In the last month or so about um, paying Ghanaian players in the age-restricted teams. There are those who feel that whereas footballers deserve to be rewarded for their, for their efforts, some people also think that it's a bad precedent to start paying underage players or players who are playing for under 17, under 20. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, as a professional player, you have to, you get the salary mm -hmm. and I don't mind. You, it doesn't matter how old you are. If, if you are young and you are talented, you are good enough and you get a good contract, then why not? No, I'm talking about the national team, for instance. Should Ghana pay say, winning bonuses and stuff like that to under-17, under-20 players? Yeah, for sure, I think so, because they, the players leave their family behind. They, some have school, but they leave it behind. They have other stuff to take care of, but they leave it behind. 
to go and represent, uh, represent the country. Mm -hmm. So I think they deserve it. Hmm. Now let's talk about your life um, when you left, or no, even Red Bull, right? Let's talk about Red Bull. Um, tell me a little bit about the structures at Red Bull, the discipline, the coaching, and even the education that allowed you to leave Ghana and to become the player you are now. Yeah, actually, uh, Red Bull, um, Ghana here, um, you could have been the best player in the academy, but first you have to be good in school. Mm. If not, they, they wouldn't let, uh, give you a chance to go to um, Salzburg for trials or something like that. So, and I used to go attend my school, mm -hmm. do my work very well, and after my half, half after half a year, when when I joined the academy, yeah. I traveled the first time to to Europe yeah. to Salzburg for a three week program yeah. training program, and yeah, from there we came back and we had like a ton of, a couple of tournaments here in Ghana at Lizzie Sports Complex, yeah. and I did also well. We had two times. We played two times tournament in France, and one time I was the top scorer. Yeah. And yeah, from after that uh, that moment, I was mo uh, transferred to Salzburg with Rafael Jamena. He was the best player in the tournament. Now think about it, Rafael Jamena, yourself, Lawrence Atizigi, proper players from the academy. Why do you think that the academy couldn't thrive anymore, and Red Bull had to leave Ghana all of a sudden? Yeah, I would say it's. Um, man, uh, problem. The problem was really from the management, not from the players, mm. because we. So had there was talent. There was talent at their disposal to to train. Very good talent, from the youth team to the senior team. Mm. But the problem was when I joined them, I, the only player who moved to Europe was Felix Ajay, and he even moved before me, mm. before I came. So and nobody moved. Imagine me trying to get into the first team yeah. and none of them is moving so it yeah. doesn't motivate me I'll be like they're all still there yeah. so what's, what's at the end of the day they, they take them out and put me in the first team mm -hmm. and as time goes on they'll put me out and put the next one and the kids the younger ones they like they didn't also like the situation and when we went to France some players could have joined really good clubs mm -hmm. but they never allowed them to, to move so after I came back from Austria, and yeah. the next day, the, all the play, academy, everybody wanted to leave. And then they had problems, and then from there, it was closed. I never heard anything about it again. Wow. Now, tell us about your, your first days in Europe, right? So you've left Ghana. I'm sure that you are happy because you are getting a chance to pursue your career on a higher level. Um, what were the first days like for you in Europe? Were you met at the airport by an agent? Did they have a hotel for you ready? Just walk us through those first days when you moved out first to um, Europe. Yeah, my first day, I, I went with uh, one of our coaches from Ghana here. And from there, someone picked us from the airport. And then uh, I went to the hotel. Everything was new for me, but I just enjoyed it because for my first time sitting in the flight, being in Europe, I was like, okay, let me just enjoy it. Let me free my mind, just enjoy the moment. And yeah, when the first training, I just felt cool because I, I entered there and then yeah, I started playing immediately. Mm. And the guys, they liked me immediately yeah. after a few minutes. And yeah, from there, everything was easy for me. Hmm. You, make, you make it sound so easy, but um, for... for for a player who goes to a foreign country, right, what are some of the obstacles? For instance, some people struggle adjusting to the food. For some people, it's the weather. For some people, it's just even the language barrier. Did you face any obstacles or like you're saying, it was really just smooth for you? You're just going with the flow. Yeah, for me, for food, I, I manage my food. I know what to eat and what not to eat. <laughs> what were you eating in your first days? My were, you, were you still visiting your Ghanaian meals every now and then? No, I, but I, I know, for example, if I will go to the Chinese restaurant, I will get for sure what I want okay. to eat. So I mostly, and the restaurant, the hotel I was, there was one downstairs. So mm. I eat always <laughs> there. And for the language, I, 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 could speak, I can speak English. And the guys too, they help me a lot. But one thing is you have to be friendly to the the players there. Mm -hmm. Then if you are friendly, then yeah. they are all coming to you. Mm -hmm. On the pitch, they help you. They, yeah. 
they try to help you understand what the coach is saying or understand what your players want to say to you or something like that. So for me, I didn't really find it difficult. For example, when I was there, uh, I started playing under 16 yeah. with uh, Valentino Lazaro, mm -hmm. this guy who plays for Hertha Berlin. Yep. Yep. And he's, he was every time with me, so I, I just felt like I'm home. So mm. everything was fine for me. Tell me about what it feels like to go to Salzburg and then immediately be shipped out on loan, come back, go on loan again. Tell us about what your mindset was when that was happening. Did you ever doubt that you'd be able to break into the first team? And what lessons did you generally learn from those loan spells? Yeah, for the loan, the truth is, they never asked me to go on loan. I, I always decided myself. Oh, wow. Because um, so they mostly change the coaches. And when mm. the coach comes and don't let me play for half a year, then they, at the half of the season, I have to go somewhere to play. Yeah. And that's very important for me. So all the loans, I decided it myself. And the last time I went on yeah. loan, I decided because I wanted to start fresh with a, a new club yeah. and see how it goes. And it went very well for me. So for the loan, I always decided myself. Mm. Now, you spent last season at Greta Firth, um, Bundesliga 2. Now, I've been keeping an eye on the Bundesliga 2 because it's super competitive. A lot of teams in there. Tell us about what that league is like. Tell us about how how much of a standout league it is and how it has helped you in your development up to this point? Yeah, for me, I would say uh, the second league in Germany is like a really, really professional league. Mm. If, if you are able to break through there, I think you will not find it difficult if you go anywhere in the first league in the world. Because mm. like, it's very physical and yeah. technically they are not the best, but they are, really, they are good enough. And yeah, you, you can see it, how many players who are who are promoted from yeah. the Bundesliga second league to the first league. A lot of really good players. So I think like it's one of the best in second league in the world. Mm -hmm. You made thirty one appearances on the season. It's called one goal um, this season. What what if you look at yourself now? You are still really young and still in your development phase. What other bits and pieces would you want to improve about your game now? Yeah, for me, I would say my style of play is more like giving assist and yeah. giving the final pass to my meet my players to score. Mm -hmm. That is my quality. Yeah. But to score scoring goals, yeah, I do score goals. But this season it wasn't like that because we had really difficult moments yeah. sometimes, and we changed a new coach. And this coach came, I wasn't playing, and then I have, I started playing. So it was yeah. a little bit difficult, but. Yeah, I, I made seven assists for the whole season, so... It's decent. Yeah, it's not good enough, but at least it's yeah. something that you can live with. Hmm. Talk about something you can live with. Um, what are your ambitions for next season? Because this was a loan spell for you. Are you perhaps hoping to make a move where you can become a more permanent bit of a side? And what are your preferred leagues to go and play in? Yeah, I still, uh, first of all, I still have one year contract with Red Bull Salzburg. Okay. But I have a lot of offers from the Bundesliga, from League One, mm -hmm. and the second league in Germany. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm just hoping that everything goes on well. But uh, at the end of next week, if it goes well, then I know already where I'm going or if I'm still staying with Salzburg. Interesting that the fate will be decided next week. But um, have you ever toyed with the idea of? playing in the Premier League because that seems to be where a lot of players seem to favour these days. Have you ever, has it crossed your mind that, wow, one day I should possibly be gracing the EPL? Yeah, for the EPL is always in my mind. It's my dream to play there. Do you and support an EPL team maybe? Yeah, I support <laughs> one, but... <laughs> but <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah, I so I'm a fan of Manchester United. Wow, that is why you are feeling shy to tell us about your no, team. Things are on. not going well for your team. I, I don't mind. I, <laughs> I, I just like Manchester because of the fighting spirit. They never give up. Honestly, though, let's, let's just digress for a second. Let's talk about your Man United team. Are, are, you, are you happy with the transition the team is going through? Mourinho gone, Sosha out, all the issues around Paul Pogba? Yeah, I, I can't really say much. I, Paul Pogba is a fantastic player, but I don't know. You think he gets criticised too much? Yeah, everybody expects uh, magic from him every game. Yeah, 
He's a big player. He's too expensive. He gets good salary and that. So he <laughs> has comes to, to pressure. He has to perform every day. But he's not the only player on the pitch. There are other players too. Mm. So if at least they should minimize the criticism, then I think he will be better. Mm. Back to national team football. Now, and I said that, and that under 20 World Cup in New Zealand was not the best of competitions for you. As far as wearing the Ghana colours again are concerned, um, what, what are your ambitions? What's the next step like for you? Yeah, the next step is go in a good league, play, uh, perform very good, and also wait for my chance in the Black Stars. Black Stars. Hmm. Um, if you look at the Black Stars now, I mean, heading to the AFCON, uh, what, do, what do you make of their chances? Looking at technical team, playing body, going to Egypt, expanded tournaments. What, what do you make of Ghana's realistic chances at Egypt 2019? Yeah, I can't really say much, but I think they have a good team. Mm -hmm. if, you look at, if you look at the coaches and the staff and the players they selected, yeah. they have good quality enough to win the cup if everything goes on well, if they don't get too much injuries. Mm -hmm. If the unity is there, the hard work, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think they can win the cup if everything is perfect, everything goes on well. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be this one says this, this one says that. We are, Ghan uh, we are Ghanaian, so yeah. if there's a problem, the yeah. coach should be able to solve it as a team, and then everything will be fine, yeah. I like to do this thing where I ask players to give me their 11. For instance, if in your head you have to pick in a football 11 to take on another 11 because it gives me an idea of what that player or how that player sees the game of football. Yeah. So if I was going to push you to pick a football 11, um, where would, let's start from the goalkeeper. Who, who would be in your post? It could, be, it could be currently active, it could be retired, it could be anything. Who would be your goalkeeper? Uh, in, only in Ghana? Or no, no, in globally. Anywhere. It could be Ghanaian, it could be anywhere. Yeah, for the goalkeeper, I'll go for Oliver Kahn. Oliver Kahn? Yeah. Who is your right back? Right back, I'll go for Kafu. Wow. <laughs> it mean, it that actually means that you don't think that any right back now has surpassed what Kafu did. Yeah, maybe there's one, but I, for me, I just like him. He's how who? he used to play and control his team. Yeah. I just like him. Who are your centre backs? Centre backs, I'll go for Sergio Ramos. Ah. And... I would say I would go for Isaac Vossa. Isaac Vossa? Yeah. Interesting choice. Is it because he has a link with Red Bull as well? You have, you have a little brotherhood with him? Yeah. I, before, I, I was yeah. just a big fan of him. My okay. family, my friends, everybody okay. was a big fan of him. Oh, wow. He was a great player for Ghana. Like, very, always present to mm -hmm. represent mm -hmm. Ghana. When you, you know... When he was in the, the team, how mm -hmm. uh, stabilized this, yeah. the middle was. So I just like him. Like Even though there are better ones, but for me, I would choose him John first. Is your guy. Who's your left back? Oh, good question. Left back, I'll go for Roberto Carlos. Oh, interesting. Brazilian, Brazilian full backs. Yeah, they are really Spanish, good. One Spanish centre-back, one Ghanaian centre-back, German yeah. goalkeeper. Let's go to a midfield. Now, are you going to play a 4-3-3 or... 4-4-2, four, four, what's your formation like? Yeah, 4-4-2, four, four, uh, four, four, like two. a diamond. Yeah. Okay, so who are your central midfielders? Um, right number six, I will put uh, Pelo. Okay. And num the two number eight, I will put Iniesta and Xavi. Okay. You have one more midfielder to go. Yeah, that's more like the number 10. Yeah. I will put, um, put Ronaldinho. Okay. <laughs> I can tell that you like such players. Yeah. I can just tell. And then who are your forwards? My forward? Oh, good question. <laughs> the most difficult side. I, I will go for Messi and probably Ronaldo or Maradona, one of them. Which Ronaldo? Cristiano or Ronaldo de Lima? Uh, de Lima. Ronaldo de Lima. Interesting. And who is going to coach this team? My former coach from Salzburg, uh, who is the current coach from Frankfurt, Adi hmm. Interesting. Very, <laughs> very interesting team there. Now, one, one other thing also that I've been wanting to ask people like you is what the most important thing is making the jump from under 20 levels or from 
Um, a player who is not a consistent start, for instance, you've not locked down a place in the team, so you have to look for loan opportunities and stuff like that to be able to stabilize yourself. What are the most important things to be able to make that jump? Um, for like you right now, I'm sure that you know within yourself what you must do to become a mainstay for another team. Yeah, first of all, you just have to re um, relax yourself, relax your brain, and just be positive. Keep fighting every day, whether you play or not. You just have to keep fighting. Don't never give up. I I remember when before the, my first game mm -hmm. with the first team mm -hmm. with Salzburg, yeah. I was with the youth team, and then I, I was promoted to the first team, yeah. and I had to play Champions League qualification. Hmm. So I. It was difficult for me, yeah. but I played very well in the first league. We won 2-1, and then we lost 3-0 in yeah. Malmo. So I think things like this, if, if your brain is relaxed, if you are fit, if you yeah. feel really good, then sh you shouldn't be scared or something like that. Tell me about your, I don't know how to put it, I'd say your most exciting moment or your highest moment um, since you've been a footballer. What has, what has brought you the most happiness as a footballer? Yeah, the most happiness is uh, first time I scored hat trick in my life with okay. the second team for Red Bull. Nice. Uh, I remember I I was training with the first team mm -hmm. actually, and then they never told me I would be playing for the second team. And mm -hmm. the next day I was just enjoying with Atiziki at home, and then they, I had a call that I have to play with, with the second team. Yeah. So I got there late and I went to the stadium late. Like everybody was seated yeah. and I had to rush to them. And then yeah, I, I was really disappointed that mm -hmm. I, I wasn't playing the weekend with the first team because yeah. I trained very good and yeah. I felt that I have to get a chance this weekend to yeah. show myself. And then I had to play with the second team. So I came in and I scored three goals. Yeah, everything was fine. I remember after scoring first and second, I never jubilated. I was just... We're just in Balotelli mode, just yeah, looking yeah, at everybody. Like <laughs> Has there, have there been moments too where you've been really down in, in your career as a footballer, where you've probably even thought about quitting or walking away from the game? For quitting or walking away, never. In never. Yeah. I, there, there are like really bad moments, but I never thought when, in my When do those bad moments come? Like a bad match, maybe an injury? Not an injury, but... You you are on your top form. You train very good, but you never get the chance to show. Mm. I remember um, we had a coach from uh, Spain. Yeah, 2016, I think, and I got an offer from Ajax, but he wanted me to stay with Red Bull. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there, and I never played one minute. For him to say, okay, he's not good enough. Someone should play. I never played one minute till oh. the last game. And we won the league already. And this team was also on relegation. So, in this game, you I didn't even, understand. I came on the bench to to play this game. That was the only game I played under this coach. And I came on the bench last 15 minutes. I had two assists. So I was. That was like my worst moment in my life. Hmm. We are just about getting into this conversation. It's getting interesting here. But we'll take a quick break here on the tracker. When we come back. We'll try and delve into more off-the-pitch issues with David. What movies he watches, what he does when he's not playing football. Yeah, maybe tell us even about his favorite meals. He told us about going to a Chinese restaurant, but we know he has a favorite meal. We'll find out about that when we come back. Stay tuned here. You're still watching The Tracker. Welcome back to The Tracker here on City TV. We are hanging out with Red Bull Salzburg winger David Atanga. Now, David, you've said... A lot of information about your club football life, national team football life, and even what your favorite starting eleven will look like. Let's move off um, the pitch a little. Um, typically, on days when you are not at the training ground, you are not at the match day, or doing something related to um, Red Bull or Greater Firth, what are we likely to find you doing? Yeah, mostly I'm somewhere with my friends and... We still do football stuff. <laughs> How is that? Like playing FIFA? Playing FIFA or, I don't know, playing tennis or... Play uh, tennis? Yeah, something like that. We just... Wait, we like just table tennis sport. or real tennis? No, like uh, football tennis. Oh, I okay. Say. Okay. Are you, are, you, are you really good at FIFA? Not per, per excellent, but 
good enough. I'm sure you always pick Barcelona because you like Lionel Messi. No. <laughs> What's your favorite team on there? FIFA, I only look for a club that have fast players. <laughs> Which club is that? Uh, mostly I go for Juventus. Ah, Every Dybala. You, make, you yeah. just have to bring the ball in the air for Ronaldo, then it's a goal. Oh, interesting. Um, I'd say that typically footballers always like to say that they're not too good at FIFA, but I'm sure, I'm sure that when I play against you, you definitely beat me, but you, you, you won't admit it. Are you, are you a very fashion-intense person because you have neon green um, Nike off-whites on? Like, how, how seriously do you take your fashion as a footballer? Yeah, I'm not really someone who likes uh, fashion and all that, but... But you like sneakers? I just like to look good. So, typically, if you, if you go into, like, a store, what are we likely to find you buying? Like, T-shirts, jackets, shoes, boots? What's, your, like, your favorite kind of um, clothing to go out for? Yeah, the interesting thing is I, I barely buy at the shops. I always order online. Ah, I see. The life of the rich and famous. You just sit in your couch, order, and they bring it to you. I think it's better for me because I, I have some particular shops Mm-hmm. which they know me very well, and I get discount also there. Oh, look at so this. So I don't need to go to the shop. Sometimes I go to the shop and I don't get what I want, mm-hmm. but if I just write them and maybe they get it for me. Now that you are an established footballer in Germany, at least that's the last year, how do you take care of your eating? Do you typically depend on your club to like have breakfast way before you train or you do your own cooking at home? Yeah, I, for example, I have someone who cooks for me um, is that the, three that? times a, a week. Okay. Who cooks for me personally what I, I, I have to eat mm-hmm. three days. What is that? Are you, are you one of those people who's like watching your diet strictly so you eat this, don't eat that, or you, you literally like to enjoy your food? Yeah, I like to enjoy my food, but I, I, I have to be... I have to be very serious about my uh, my body. Yeah. I have to control my body because mm-hmm. that's my capital. So I just employed someone who cooks for me three times a week. And yeah, I the person knows what my body needs three days before every mm-hmm. game. So that's, I mostly eat that. And for breakfast, we, we eat together. Most, the coaches, yeah. uh, the staff want us to eat together. So mostly breakfast, we eat together at the training ground. Well... These days, um, social media has become an integral part of an athlete's life. How, on a scale of 1 to 10, how intense are you with using social media? Yeah, it depends on which one. For Instagram, I'm every day there. <laughs> uh, for Facebook, I'm not really there, but sometimes. And Twitter too, I'm also almost every day there. Hmm. I mean, you've observed that in recent times, for instance, in your own club, Manchester United, there have been problems with the use of social media. For instance, um, sometimes they say footballers lose games and go onto their social media and go and post pictures of themselves looking like they don't care about what, what's going on with the team. What do you make about one, the modern athlete and how he or she must use social media? Yeah, I would say, for example, I wouldn't go and post a picture in the nightclub showing after losing 5-0 to <laughs> my opponent. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Nobody would do that. But if I would lose a game and post a picture of uh, the past game or something like that mm-hmm. and write, just write something nice under it or something like that, it doesn't mean I don't care. It's just something that will make me awake for the next game, mm-hmm. something that will make me ready for the next game. But people, someone who don't know, that would take it something else and... At the end of the day, they will say, you did this, you did that. But that is the professional uh, life. Sometimes you play a game and mm-hmm. the fans just write shit to your DM or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You just have to know how to manage it. And yeah. how, how, how much potential do you think social media has to be able to help market footballers or help to push footballers forward? For instance, there are, football, there are some footballers who don't know how to use any social media at all. But you have used Instagram, you've used Twitter and Facebook over time. How do you think that those who are not so social media savvy can maybe take advantage of it? Are there any benefits to it at all? Yeah, for social media, I would say there are a lot of benefits in it and there are also a lot of 
negatives negatives in it but at the end of the day it depends on how you use it yeah if you know how to use uh, the social media then i think it will be fine for you for example sergio busquet he yeah. never had instagram till the last year or something yeah. like that and he was okay but since he had instagram mm -hmm. he has oh, now over five million followers on instagram or something like that and his, he has a lot of fans all over the world yeah. and they will want to know what's that, going on what's with going with him and all that but without social media nobody knows about it and he he i, I don't think he never knew he that he has so much fans or something yeah. like that so i think at least if this social media would tell people what you're doing how you're doing how you manage your life where yeah. you are where you are not and all that hmm. tell us a little bit about what your days in ghana are like when you come down um for the holidays usually how long are you here for do you spend all your time with family do you engage in more football related activity what is it like when you come down here yeah normally when i'm home like for the first five days yeah i just relax without sports nothing mm. just with my friends we are home we go out to have fun and that's it and after the how fun how what's, what's your type of fun like yeah sometimes we just go somewhere to for shows movies concert or something like okay. that or maybe we go to the beach just hang around or something like that. have a favorite ghanaian artist talk about concerts yeah ghanaian artist i i had one but she's no more so oh who's that ebony ebony yeah. oh may her so rest in peace yeah. interesting so now ebony's gone you haven't found a replacement for her yeah i'm here too but <laughs> interesting Everybody was just around for about two years or so. You fell in love with her so much, you haven't found a replacement for yeah, her. Yeah, not uh, in love of her music. Oh, I'm, I, I <laughs> you just had to make yeah. that correction. I mean, talking about making that correction, meaning that there are people who are watching who could be worried. Um, is there any special person in your life as a young footballer? Yeah, I, for sure. Are you married yet or yeah? No, I'm not married. <laughs> You're just like taking it slow? Yeah, I... First, now I just need a little bit of time for myself, for my career, and then I can think about being with someone. Just, just, just to stay on that topic a bit. Now, something serious just struck me, right? Uh, because there's a guy at Asante Kotoko who had a very painful ordeal playing as a young footballer in Europe. He, was, um, he had an engagement with a woman. He was accused of rape, blah, blah, blah. I mean, how do you deal with all the fame, all the women and people who think that you're an athlete so you have money they come up to you sometimes the attention is unwanted how do you deal with all of that and how do you make sure that your head is focused where it needs to be yeah it depends on you the player if people are coming to you or mm -hmm. ladies are coming to you let me say it this way you should just be you just you can be friends with them and that's all you don't have to engage into something that you are not ready for, or something that will bring problems to do your you get, career. Do you get or something a lot like. of female attention? Um, not really, because are I, you sure? <laughs> yeah, because I, for example, I when I for, when I, uh, I was in Germany, yeah. I never had contact to anyone wow. because I was just being myself. I know what I wanted. I'm here to to, to make a next to step, a to make a bigger step. So I'm just here to play football, and that's it. And if I'm home, I, I'm not from Accra, so yeah. I don't really know people here. Yeah. I just know maybe four guys who plays football. And when my friends come down, we just hang around, and that's all. I don't. And when I'm at home, <coughs> my family too, you know how it is, yeah. very strict. So I always have to be indoors, like always. So I, I just, I, for me, I think footballers, it's, people will say they do this, they do that, but sometimes it's not like that. Mm. It's just a tag that is on our back that we are like this, we are like this, but we are not like that. Not like that. Do you, I would say not everybody is like that. Mm. Interesting. Do you, do you watch movies? Are you a movie person? Yeah, I do watch movies. Um, you have any favorite movies? Mm, or TV I mo shows I, maybe? I mostly watch uh, series. Oh, yeah. you are mostly a series person. What yeah. have you been on to? Game of Thrones? Yeah, but that one is oh, you, I've finished. Already, you finished. So. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting stuff. What about it is so gripping for you? And when do you even find time in your busy life to watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> My life is busy, but I really have a lot of time. After, <laughs> after training, when we train in the yeah. morning, the whole day is free. So mm, I just yes. be indoors, watch movies, eat, sleep, and that's it. Have you ever thought about 
I know I know you are still 22 years, but has it ever struck you about what you probably do with yourself if you weren't a footballer? First, before even the life after retirement, I mean, if you hadn't been a footballer, is there any other sport you could possibly have ended up in? Sports, I would say... Uh, a marathon runner, I think. Marathon runner? Yeah, because I remember oh, yeah, when yeah. I was in JSS yeah. and senior high school, I used to run and I presented my region here mm. in Accra mm. for the national one and I was fourth over, I don't know how, how many people, but yeah. really over a thousand people I was yeah. fourth. So that was really what I was doing before yeah. I started playing soccer. Hmm. So I think that would have been my side of sports. How do you find ways, right, when you come down to Ghana to, let's say, inspire young ones who perhaps also want to go professional? Do you, do you give out football kits? Do you call them over to your house? When I was young, Audi Saka used to do stuff like that. He used to give out kits. He used to have little parties where guys like Antonio Boda and Abu Bakari Yakubu used to come around back in the day. What's it like for you when you come around and... What's your idea of inspiring the next generation like? Yeah, normally when I'm home, I, I make sure I get a minimum 50 pa uh, pair of shoes mm. for my ex-club. And nice. jerseys. That's uh, Borga Juventus. Yeah. Things for training and all that. So equipment for training. And yeah, yeah I just try my best to help. And I think whenever I'm home, at least everyone has one shoe or something like that. Hmm. Well, when you, have you gone back there in recent times? Like, have you seen them in recent times? Um, they're not, not yet because I came for five days ago. Yeah. And I have to do some things here in Accra. But I'll be there at the weekend, so for sure I'll see them. Do they, what, what, what kind of welcome happens? Is there like some long convoy out there to meet David Atanga? Because I know, look, the Northern players love their football if you go into if you go cover a black stars game you literally see wakaso fan club Babaraman fan club is there a david atanga fan club already yeah i think <laughs> there, there should be one but i i prefer when i'm coming home i should it should just be low-key i just want to come home safe straight to my mom see her and then i drive home well guess what um typically what we do on this show is that if we have a jersey we'll have you sign it for us and you have uh, brought us something nice from um, Greater Firth. So this is what number twenty. Yeah, this is this is really nice. If you could just do us the honors by just signing this for us, that sure. would be nice. Yes. Nice one. Now, finally, before we call it quits on today's edition of the Tracker, what's next for you? What should we expect from you as a footballer? Yeah, not not much. Just I first of all I'll say thank you to everyone for the support, for yeah. the prayers and all that. But very soon we will see something big if God permits. See something big. Yeah. I hope that means playing in the EPL, playing the Bundesliga. I wish you all the best thank in you your very future, much. David. Thank you very much. Well, it's been absolutely fun hanging out with David Atanga here on the tracker. Told us about life. Uh, with Salzburg live playing for his coach team, what it is like to take the first steps into Europe as a young footballer. It's been enlightening, it's been educative. Keep watching the tracker on City TV.